NASCAR today, what do you think about it? I think NASCAR today is um, moving in the right direction. You know, there's some things that I can't explain away that aren't great. Um, you know, our, our TV numbers are question, you know, the TV numbers confuse the hell out of me because I had a, I had a, I was very entertained in the playoffs. I thought that the championship race itself was very entertaining, but I don't know where the numbers are. Um, I don't know why our numbers aren't better, but, um, all of the big changes, the next gen car, um, all of the other things that we've done, the racing at the mile and a half is phenomenal. There's, um, there was a uh, very big concern over the short track package. Um, we'll call it the short track and road course package because it kind of affects both. But there's already some sort of light at the end of the tunnel with that, which I really wasn't expecting at this point in the year. I thought that the you know any kind of advances or pr progress made to make the short track racing better was going to be another 12 months down the road. Goodyear had a tire at Martinsville that I think helped us understand a direction to get better. There's a big test in Phoenix that NASCAR and the drivers are fired up about. We had one already at Richmond that did not uh, bear any fruit, but we're going to Phoenix in the winter to continue to work on the short track package. And um, there's some real excitement around what NASCAR wants to try. And for the first time, I think they've said that everything is on the table, even horsepower, if I read the quotes correctly from, from O'Donnell. So, yeah. you know, there's, uh, there's a lot to be excited about. And I, um, you know, I feel, I feel pretty good about it. You know, there was, there's some stretches and some moments over the last decade or so that I wasn't so sure about and had big concerns about, but. The, the next gen car has been been better and I'm happier with it personally than I thought I would be and um, yeah I mean I I think the Xfinity series is great there is a big debate internally about what the identity of the Xfinity series will be where is this series five years or ten years from now? Obviously, I care deeply about that because I'm I'm an owner in the series. You know, what does NASCAR? What do the new TV deals look like? Who's in the Who's involved in those TV deals? How will that affect our popularity, and who can see our sport? Um, all of those things are you know have everybody a bit on edge over the next probably 24 months. But once all of that's in the rearview mirror, we can sort of focus back on competition and trying to put on amazing races. Uh, the next gen car, uh, your opinion on the next gen car, what is it? Well, I like it at the mile and a half. It's awesome. I know the drivers complain about dirty air and dirty air has been around since the second race car got built. Um, I, I don't know that you can ever fix it entirely. Sure. It's been worse at times throughout different packages in NASCAR's history, but, when you watch a mile and a half race, um, I mean, look at Charlotte. Let's look at the World 600. Nobody, I mean, the 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 last decade at Charlotte on the Oval, it's been a bit of a hard sale. So much so that we built the Roval and took away one of the Oval dates. Good point. Now, now in Jeff Gluck's, was it a good race poll? The World 600 was second this year. In the last several oval races at Charlotte have been probably some of the most entertaining races of the year. And so the mile and a half stuff's great. I know the drivers don't love the new Atlanta because it's just kind of wild and tough, but I loved that race. The I held a show. It was. <laughs> I was God. I don't believe I've I that's the most entertained I've been by watching a race in a long damn time. I was blown away by how thrilling all of the action was. And that race ended as in a rain, you know, uh, rain shortened event. 
But I still thought, to me, that was yeah. the most entertaining handful of laps I'd ever seen. Um, yeah, to, to your there. point, to your point, they're going back at the Brickyard. They're going away from the road course now. Right. To, to your point. I want to, I do want to say, I mentioned it, you know, the short track package has to get better, but NASCAR, Goodyear, everybody's at the table. Everybody wants to make it better yeah. and they, they're going to try their hardest. And I think they're going to, they're, you know, they're not going to take the shortcut to try to get there. They're going to go through this methodically and try everything to try to get some answers. And um, now when they get those answers, uh, we may have to be patient before all of the teams can get access to this new uh, parts and pieces, whatever it is that they think they need. But I'm really happy with what I'm seeing in NASCAR in terms of how they're trying to move to figure this out. Cause I want the short tracks to be just as exciting as the mile and a half stuff. And um, that's important to me. Short track racing is our roots it's our history. It's where we came from. It's where all of us learned to race. Yeah. It's a discipline that we absolutely have to have. Last but not least, uh, your opinion on the fines tech inspection, how we're going about governing the sport right now. I'm pretty good with it. Um, I always said that I want NASCAR to be strict and I want penalties to be severe. Mm. You know, You're right up your alley. Yeah. <laughs> Look, when I get caught or busted or in trouble, man, it sucks. And I and I don't love I don't love that experience. Yeah. But in my mind, I think that in racing, whether it's a, a cheated up part on a race car or a behavioral issue in the pits or or a driver behind the wheel with a behavioral issue, you gotta nip it in the bud. Let's not we're not going to tiptoe up onto this. I want a deterrent right then and there that that driver will never want to experience again. Right. And so, you know, I, I think that NASCAR's, you know, made a, you know, they made a stand on messing with this car. They're not going to, you know, it's not going to be fun if you get busted fooling around with these parts. Um, they made that clear. And I'm, I'm, I think that, you know, for the most part, we won't have much to worry about in terms of teams trying to cheat uh, or do something with these these race cars. The behavioral issues is, you know, like the intentional wrecking and so forth. Um, it's a it's a judgment call. It's not as it's not as clear right or wrong. Right. NASCAR has to decide was their intent. Do they want to assume or guess you know they won't they won't black flag a driver for self spinning unless he admits it. Even though you know you're watching that and you're like that dude did that on purpose. Mm -hmm. You know they're not gonna go there and make an assumption unless they've got hard facts and ev evidence, right? Unless Denny Hamlin admits it, right? Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's where it gets tough for me because I'll see something that I know was intentional, and NASCAR sometimes doesn't act without real evidence. And so it gets a little frustrating sometimes, but, you know, other times, you know, they don't always have to have that admission of guilt. Um, but, you know, that, that the, the behavioral issues, sometimes I feel like, you know, certain drivers would have been able to learn quicker what not to do if mm. NASCAR were a little more harsh in some of those decisions there's some times when a driver's wrecked another driver on purpose and nothing got nothing was nothing was done right it was just kind of it looked a little suspect we're not sure if it was on purpose and so they they don't do anything that driver really just gets away with it and thinks that he can do that again next time he wants to 